Let's just say that you get some project data to work with and the data looks something like this. You have the name of the project and you have the start of the project and you have the end of the project. And you get asked a question, which are the common months in between where the projects overlap. How are you going to answer that question? Well, if you want to answer the question in style, this is the visualization that you would want to present to anybody who asks the question. Take a look. Let's just say that for project E, uh, which is highlighted right here, all of the months which are marked in deep yellow or the fluorescent color are the overlapping months in which E project is overlapping with the other months. You can also change that to project D, project C, project A, and this becomes a dynamic visual where the person can click on the name of the project and get to see all the overlapping months. Well, how did I do that? I'm going to show you in this video. Let's go. Okay, to be able to build that visualization that I just showed it to you, we're going to need two things. First, we would need to prepare our data and then we would need some DAX and visualization trickery to set all of that up very nicely. Please take a look at the data that I'm working with in Power Query to begin with. So three simple columns, name, start date and the end date. And in case I want to take a look at all the months that fall between the dates, I need to expand all the dates that fall between the start and the end. So this project starts in 2020 in the month of January. This project ends in 2022, about two years again in the month of January. So I need all the months in between, not the dates, but all the months in between where the project was running. Similarly, I'm going to do that for all of the dates right here. How do I do that? I'm going to use a simple list generation function. Take a look at this custom column that I have written, which is rendering me a list. If I just open up the formula bar for that, you can see that um, I am using a function called list.generate. And I'm saying that, hey, why don't you start with the start date? So whatever is the start date right here, you start with that as the first input. Then you have got to end the list generation as soon as you reach the end date, which is the, this particular uh, value right here. Now, every single increment needs to be one increment of the month. And that is what I have mentioned right here. Keep adding a month to that. And that's all about it. The other things are just adjustment to the dates as to how they appear. But that's pretty much the function. Once I commit to this function, it gives me a list. And if I peek into the list, I'm going to see that it generates all the dates in between which are at the gap of one month. So this is the month of January, the month of February, the month of March, so on and so forth. And this is going to go on till about 2022. Once I've been able to get the list right here, I can expand that list. I can set the data type to be a particular date data type. I'm good to go. I can click on close and apply and the data gets loaded into Power BI. Okay, quick interruption in the video. In case you are a beginner with Power BI and you'd like to master the fundamentals of Power Query, DAX and data modeling really well, get on top of the fundamentals and then start solving really hard problems even of your own data, I would highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super duper awesome. All right, let's just get back to the video. Okay, people, once the data has been loaded into Power BI, the next step is obviously going to be to create a calendar table. And that's my calendar table. Now I have used DAX to create the calendar table. Should you want, you can you also create calendar tables in Power Query, but with some standard columns here, date, index, month, quarter, and year, so on and so forth. Any which ways, this calendar table is used to link to my expanded dates, the dates that just got expanded, and that is linked right here through a standard one-to-many relationship. The second thing that I want to talk about is the pivot table that I have set up on the screen right here. So that's a very standard pivot table, a matrix visualization. That's what Power BI calls the pivot table as. But if you take a look at the pivot table, it's very standard. Uh, we have names coming from the data in the rows of the pivot table, which is right here. And then in the columns, we have year and the month. These two columns are coming from my calendar table right here. Now, once the pivot table has been set, the next thing is to set up a slicer where the user can pick up any project that he wants to highlight in this matrix visual right here. Now, to be able to make a slicer, there is one consideration that you have to keep in mind. What happens is that if you click on the G, let's say project name right here, this selection of G is going to filter your table to only one single value, which is the value G and the rest values are going to be disappeared because that's the filter context. Now, in order for me to avoid that and in order for me to highlight G instead of filtering my table, I have created another table called my project names table and I can just show you that. So I'm, I'm just saying that, hey, why don't you go in my data, which is this particular table right here. And in this table data, there is something called as the name of the project, which is right here. 
And why don't you just pick up all the unique names and make a table like this. And this table is a disconnected table. It holds no relationship with any other tables. This is just for me to create that slicer so that once I click on the slicer, the table doesn't get filtered. Rather, I have some mechanism to highlight the value of the month in that table. So using this particular column, the name column, I have built a slicer right here that I have placed it on the screen right here. Nice and easy. Now at the moment, the slicer is not interacting with the table right here. Let's just write some DAX to be able to do that. Okay, so I start with the first DAX, which is nothing but the check measure that I have written. It's a very simple measure and you will understand the measure better if you take a look at the measure when the measure is dragged in the visual. So I'll take my check, put that in the visual and it shows up something like this. And now if I were to explain to you this very simple measure, all that I'm checking is that for every single cell, which is this cell or this cell or this cell or this cell, please check if there is a value or not. If the table is empty, then just give me a blank. But if the table is not empty, then why don't you just give me a dash? And this dash that I have used right here is nothing but a very simple emoji that I have just copied it from the web. So all that it does is it just takes a look at does the table contain any value or was the date there in that particular month or not? If the date was not there, it just returns you a blank. But if the date was there, it just gives you your emoji right here. That at least tells me that when does the project start right here and when does the project end right here. At the moment, the slicer doesn't really talk to the table right here. If Even if I were to click on G or F or E, nothing happens to the table at the bottom. Now, what I would want to happen is that once I, let's say, click on the E slicer, E should be highlighted and all the other projects should also get highlighted with respect to E that which months are overlapping. And to make that happen, I have written another measure called conditional formatting. It's a bit long measure, but the logic is very simple. All that I'm checking is that, hey, please take a look at is any particular project name selected in the slicer or not? If it's selected, color it a certain way. If it's not selected, don't color it in a certain way. Take a look at it. It's not that hard. Just some logic right here and you should be good to go. And once this particular conditional formatting measure has been written, I use that measure to color the cells of my table right here. Well, how do I do that? You can click on the table right here, go over to the format. In the format, click on more options, and I'm gonna go to cell elements. Once I'm there, I'm gonna activate the background color right here, which opens up the conditional formatting box, to which I'm gonna say that I'd like to color based on the field value, and the field value is what? The measure that I have written, which is nothing but conditional formatting. Click on okay, click on okay, and that goes the highlighting. Now, because E was highlighted in the slicer right here, the table doesn't get filtered, but the table gets highlighted. E is black, which is highlighted right here. And all the other months that have the same overlapping as the months for E also get highlighted that these months are overlapping with E. Obviously, if you change for any other particular project name, the months accordingly get highlighted and it looks pretty slick. And once you lay out everything neatly and nicely on the canvas right here, it looks something like this. My slicer is slightly laid up up on the top and I can also display that what is the project start and what is the project end, what is the duration of the project. It's a little label that I have done and that actually shows up all the projects right here. Well, in case you were not to highlight any particular project name right here, and if you were to just click on D, all the projects get highlighted in the fluorescent color. But if you were to click on any particular project, that project and all the other relative projects get highlighted which months were overlapping. All right, that's been it. I hope you were able to draw some valuable insights of the video, whether that might be the query that we wrote, the formulas that we wrote, the DAX, the modeling, or any visualization trick. Please let me know what did you find helpful in this video in the comments, or if you have a question, I'll be glad to reply. In the end, I'd like to give a big shout out about my DAX and my Power Query training programs. In case you are a beginner and you'd like to get on fundamentals really well, learn the hard parts of data modeling, Power Query, DAX, and then move on to solving your own problems with confidence, I would highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It is going to be super duper awesome. Well, thanks so much for watching this and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye now.